so you have this desk phone. Maybe it's new in the box. Maybe it was on your desk and you had to move offices. Or maybe someone just handed you this phone and said, hook it up. You flip this thing over, and now you notice there's way more connection points than you were expecting, and you start wondering, how the heck do you set this thing up? Well, this stuff is easy once you know how, and that's what we're going to talk about right now. I'm Mike with Iron Logics, and this is Physical Phone Setup. have here is a typical Cisco phone and over here a typical Yaling phone. If you have a different brand and that's totally okay just keep watching. 3CX does support Yaling, Fanville, Hitech, SNOM, Grandstream and with limited support for Cisco and Polycom. All those different brands even the ones I didn't mention all have essentially the same connection points they just may label them something different. If you look at our two examples here you can see that Yaling and I'm going to try and position this uh, right in front of the camera labels their ports uh, in a certain way. EXT, PC, Internet, DC, there's a headset and there's the handset port. If I grab this Cisco, you're going to see, and hopefully this reflection will be good in the lighting, you're going to see there's an aux port here, PC, SW, or switch, and then your, your handset port. Your phone may say something completely different or be labeled a totally different way, and that's okay, but functionally, and for the purpose of this video, they are going to function the same way. Now that that's out of the way, what I'm going to do is set the Cisco aside and demonstrate the setup using this Yaylink right here. The first thing we need to do is connect the handset to the base. In order to do that, we need the handset cord. Let's look at that. So the handset cord has two ends, obviously. One end is longer than the other. And we're going to use this longer end to actually attach to the base. And if you notice, there's this notch channel here. That is where the long cord kind of sits in there. You may have to kind of push it in and twist it around in order for it to sit securely inside that channel. Okay, and then the short end would connect up to this base. We're not going to connect the base right now. Uh, what we're going to do there is connect that at the very end. So we're going to set that handset aside. And now we're going to grab our data cable. Unlike the handset cord, the data cables probably won't have a cable channel to sit in. What you're looking to do is to connect the correct data cable to the correct port. Now it's important to note that I've said data cable. If you're connecting this phone as part of a new phone system install, you may have legacy phone lines that use regular telephone cables. You cannot use legacy telephone cable with voice over IP phones or VoIP phones. VoIP phones require data connections, the same kind that your computers use to connect to the network. So we're going to connect this phone's internet jack to the wall or to the network switch. And I've simulated that network jack or network wall jack here. So that's going to go in the internet connection. So from the wall to the phone on the internet connection. That's your source. Most deployments have a single source data connection, and we're going to assume that's the case for this video. However, check with your IT provider. They may have separate connections for your phone set and your computer. So assuming you have the one data source and your phone is now using that, your computer is probably offline and complaining it can't connect to the network because the phone took its connection. That's okay, here's where we fix that. Your phone set should have a PC or a computer port. That port is used to make the data connection to your computer so that it can connect to the network. We do this by inserting another data cable into the PC port and then this end would go to your computer. The important thing to remember about this is that the phone gets its data source first and then the phone passes the data connection to the computer via the PC port. Now if you've done this correctly, your phone should now be powering up. If it didn't, one of two things happened. Either you did this incorrectly, which is really not likely given that we carefully went through it, or your upstream network switch is not capable of providing both data and power over Ethernet. That has to be fixed and there's only two ways to do that. The first way is to get a power adapter and plug it into the power port located on your phone set base. While this certainly will work, it's not something that we typically do. We would only issue power adapters for voice over IP sets in deployments with very few phones, like two or three at the most. It's simply much better to use the second way to power these up and that's by using a power over ethernet or PoE network switch that provides both data and power over the single network cable connected to your internet port. 
To be honest, power details should be sorted out well in advance for you, and this isn't something that you as the end user should really be thinking about or dealing with. Your IT provider should address this upfront during the initial system implementation, and you should either have the correct switches in place already, or have been provided with separate power adapters with your phone ready to go. Beyond this, your phone set, like this Yealink here, may have additional connection ports. This particular model does have a headset jack for a wired headset, and it also has an EXT or auxiliary port. This aux port is used to connect an extension sidecar, for example. Wireless headsets may require different connections, USB adapters, or other hardware to connect properly to your phone. Cordless headsets can be tricky with these kinds of phones, so again, talk to your IT pro about making sure your headset will work with this or any voice over IP phone. So now that we have our cables connected, it's time to go ahead and attach the base. On this particular model and models that you may have, uh, you can see that there's several slots here uh, to attach a base that looks like this. So what we're going to do is slide that up under the wire there, and we have an option of attaching it uh, up here or shifting it down one. And what that's going to do is when we flip this phone over, it's going to adjust the angle of the phone, how it sits on your desk at this angle or at a higher angle if you adjust it, if you adjust it lower. For now, we're going to adjust it at the lowest position. We're going to go ahead and flip the phone over, taking care to keep that cable in this air gap here. If you've done it right, the phone should sit snugly on the desk and not wobble. If you've done it wrong, you'll see that the cable will probably be under one of the feet and as you're going to type, you'll see the phone will wobble. Just kind of tuck those cables in that air gap and you should be good to go. Not every brand is going to have an angle adjustment. Uh, some, may, some, may, some screens may adjust just by tilting the screen itself. Others you may have to adjust the base. Uh, it really does depend on your particular model. Now we're going to move this up here because it's time to attach the actual handset. So you can see we have the short end here and then we have the handset located here. So we're going to click that into place and now the handset is attached. As far as physical connections goes, that should be it. Now what I will talk about is uh, the handset cord. Out of the box it should look like this and through use it should kind of stay looking like this. What happens over time uh, as you use your phone, you're going to pass your handset from ear to ear back to the other ear. It's just normal and what happens. What you're actually doing when you do this motion from ear to ear is you are actually twisting this cable and as you can see down here it's already starting to twist. Over time this will continue to twist and if you're not careful, I'm going to put a picture up here, uh, it can look something like this. <laughs> Don't let it get to that state. Uh, every once in a while just go back and if you're used to shifting it to ear to ear it's going to twist in a certain fashion go ahead and unravel it about once a week back to its normal position and it should stay looking like this all the time if it does happen to get to look like the picture looks it's going to be time to replace that phone cable what's going to happen is if you look in here this connection point between the cord itself and uh, the connector will strain and what's going to wind up happening is your conversations will be broken up, they'll be staticky or poppy, and you're not going to be happy in either of the people that are going to be calling you. So in order to fix that, if your cord does get to that state, the only thing to do you can do is replace it. Not the phone, just the cord. But it, there's no need for that to happen. If you unravel the cord about once a week or just make sure it's sitting uh, properly, it should be fine. Take care of your equipment. Your equipment will take care of you and last a long time. Folks, if you like this video, you'll love what we do to make you more productive. Iron Logics is a proud 3CX partner and IT provider. Give us the opportunity to help you. I promise we won't disappoint you. Also, don't forget to subscribe. We add videos all the time, and it's always good to stay up to date with the latest and greatest from Iron Logics and 3CX. Thanks for watching.